Well, again, uh, wow, good morning. Um, wasn't expecting that. Uh, I'm often surprised when I come to Christ Church in good ways, but I had hoped to sit down with Justin and Scott and just talk about what it's been like with Patrick away on sabbatical and see if they'd made any changes they thought they could get away with. But somehow I'm reminded of the cat in the hat and thing one and thing two. (laughs) We can all hope that Patrick didn't decide to jump online this morning and see what was going on here. Well, I, I find such behavior a little embarrassing, don't you? Now, your rector might say that they're acting like a bunch of dang hippies. <laughs> I'm not talking about thing one and thing two. I'm talking about the apostles. Listen, those who had been baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. They were all together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Sounds like a dang hippie commune to me. (laughs) Just as awkward, they spent much time together in the temple praising God. And I mean, who does that? Going to church all the time makes me uncomfortable being around people like that. So it could be just me. Maybe my embarrassment threshold is pretty low and I feel awkward too easily. Back in the olden days, I was brought up understanding there were just some things you didn't talk about in public. Money, sex, politics, religion. You youngsters may think I'm making that up. (laughs) That's like saying, you know, there was a time when phones didn't take pictures and they were wired to a wall. (laughs) I know it's, it's hard to believe Now it's hard to get people to stop talking about pretty much anything, and our culture doesn't seem embarrassed by anything, just entertained. But how about this for awkward and embarrassing? How about finding yourself caught in a conversation with someone who says, you know, I heard the voice of God last night, and he said to me, or God told me to... Or I was talking to God last night and he said this. That could be awkward, even for a lot of us committed Christians. And setting aside questions about the fine line between Christian mysticism and plain craziness, it's still interesting how embarrassed we can feel when people talk as if God actually talks. And not just in church, but wherever and whenever he feels like it. It seems like church, well, I was going to say church is a pretty safe place, but after today, (laughs) I wish I'd had time to rewrite this whole thing. (laughs) Church normally (laughs) is a pretty safe place to talk about unsafe things and use unsafe language. I think that's one of the reasons those first Christians in Acts came together so often so they could be gathered around and remember things like Christ is risen from the dead. Remember that the word is present and active and speaking to us and that we can hear his voice, Alleluia. When we're in church together, that kind of talk doesn't make us squirm, hardly registers at all. Did you notice how we prayed the collect at the beginning of our worship? It assumes that Jesus is going to speak to us. We pray, grant that when, not if, but when, grant that when we hear his voice. And of course, the language in today's gospel, my sheep hear my voice, Jesus says. The shepherd calls his own sheep by name and they follow because they know his voice. And I think we're, we're fine with that kind of talk about Jesus talking to us when we're in church together. We can say unsafe things like that in the shelter of this beautiful place. But 
try striking up a conversation like that at lunch or tomorrow at work or at school. So I heard Jesus say to me, does God really talk to us? Does Jesus really want to get all personal with us and call us by name, be a recognizable voice? Listen, a big part of what you do when you gather here at Christ Church as the body of Christ in this place, when you gather to worship, what we're doing is to practice for all the time that we're not here, to practice being Christ's body, to rehearse living as the flock of the Good Shepherd by rehearing continually the good news so that we can be more attuned to the sound of his voice when we're not here. The language we use as the church gathered gives us a way of listening and looking, of speaking and interpreting and making sense of life as it unfolds within us and all around us every day. We come in and try to settle down here and listen so that we can listen expectantly for the one who calls us by name when we're out of this sheep pen and in open pasture. We praise God here so that we might find our voices to offer praise when we're everywhere else. We exchange the Lord's peace with one another here so that sometime this week, when we meet someone who is anxious and fearful, we might remember that we've got something to offer them. And in the life received in the bread and the wine, we discover that we have received life enough to share with those who hunger and thirst. And we continue to do what that first hippie commune did. We show up regularly in places like this, devoting ourselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers, so that our hearts and minds are attuned to the voice of the Good Shepherd, so that our trust in him increases so that this life we have received by his death and resurrection becomes ingrained in us, so that bit by bit and day by day, we are transformed into who we have been baptized to be. Grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. That was our prayer together as we begin. So is Jesus, our good shepherd, speaking to you and to me, knowing us each by name? Is God talking to you and me as we move through our ordinary days? Listen, not to make you feel awkward, but I heard God speaking to me twice in recent days, three times if you count the latest Ted Lasso episode, but it'd take too long to set up the context, so just two. Since it's still Easter, I'll say that what I heard and saw was resurrection life. In the first instance, God came disguised as a young woman, a recovering alcoholic. Courtney described her years of alcohol and drug abuse and the abuse she suffered at the hands of others. And she then described the truth and love she discovered in recovery and her slow return to sobriety and sanity and health. She was so full of gratitude for the people who had loved her in spite of herself, who believed in her and loved her when she did not believe she could be loved. She thanked God for all the kind people he had placed in her life. And she said that we are loved and that there's always hope even when things are terrible and that she had found a living hope in the people who would not give up on her. And she said, everything I have now, the life I have now, makes everything I went through before worth it. The second time, God spoke to me was over the phone as I was driving into the hill country for a meeting at one of our churches. The call was from my oldest friend 
He's at MD Anderson in the fight of his life with blood cancer. He doesn't call me much these days because he's too fatigued, doesn't feel like talking, which in happier times was his favorite thing to do, was just talk and talk and talk and talk. I was going to go see him day before yesterday, but Patty, my wife, got sick, and I didn't want to risk carrying anything to him. Well, Johnny called as I was driving because he wanted to tell me about an odd thing that had happened in his hospital room before he forgot it. He's visited by chaplains who pray for and pray with him, but the person whose prayers he looks forward to the most are those of a lady in housekeeping who cleans his room on some days. And he tells me this, she came in the other day and asked if she could pray again for Patty, his wife is Patty also, if she could pray for Patty and for me, and I said, of course. So she held Patty's hand and placed her other hand on my foot and she began to pray. And when she was praying, she wasn't praying in English this time. It went on a long time. I don't even know how long it went and I just got caught up in it and I was carried away somewhere. I have no idea what she was praying, but I wanted to tell you about it and tell you how much peace I felt. Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and call them my name and they follow me. That would be Courtney and Johnny. Jesus spoke and keeps speaking through the words and the love of so many others. And yet it's his voice that they hear. And this hearing is not meant to be passive but active so that we find ourselves in a conversation that draws out from us a response. Jesus, our good shepherd, knows us fully and loves us completely. And in his resurrection, we too are raised up. And this raising up begins as soon as this morning when the good shepherd who loves us and calls us by name now invites his sheep to rise up on their hind legs and go out from here and join him in the loving and healing and shepherding of others. So try this, maybe practice this. Just stop some time today and listen Ponder this gospel story some more and pray for ears to hear through what someone is saying so that you can hear the good shepherd who loves you and calls you by name and speaks to you. My sheep hear my voice, Jesus says. I know them and they know me. I've come that they may have life and have it abundantly. And if that seems like maybe too much to remember on a Sunday morning, just listen for Jesus saying your name and saying to you, I love you. That may be embarrassing, but it's a fair summary of the Good Shepherd passage. Jesus loves you. And let that rise up in your heart and fill your vision Carry it from here out into your day, into your places, into your life, and listen and look. Is it true? Is it true that God really is speaking to you, to this beautiful parish? Awkward, maybe, but from what I hear and see, it's gospel truth. Amen.